We got us a McCall here that uh, I suppose it was 100 degrees this morning and uh, they unplugged it luckily. So we're gonna check, see what's going on. It was working fine earlier, like it always is. So we're gonna plug it in, see what we got going on. Gave it the sniff, sniff test. It smells like food in here, so let's see what we got. Looks like this has had a few things done to it here. Probably why they spent so much money on this thing so far. It's like a 2011 the compressor was replaced. There we go, that's better. All right, so at least I can see what's going on there. You can tell the start component's been changed once before. The compressor was changed in 2011. Pretty much everything else has been changed, but it looks in good physical shape. Let's plug it in again, just make sure it's not pumping. It's 2000, so this thing is <clears throat> 20 years old, and it's 115 volts, so, and it runs on R22, sweet, so yeah, it's getting a, getting a little old there, to say the least, but, gotta admit, this is a pretty nice cooler, and it's in pretty good shape, seals are in good shape, I mean, you can replace the components in this thing and get a lot longer life out of it. I mean, when it's in this good of shape, I don't see any good reason to can it. Just buy one of the new things that are gonna fall apart even quicker. So let's go ahead and get the Annie on here, see what we can find out. That don't look very good right there. Okay, so we got that on there. Let's go ahead and see if we can make this thing run. No good place to put my camera because everything's aluminum. There we go. It's about as good as you're gonna get it today. For giggles, let's go ahead and put this on amperage. And I'll watch it with that just in case. Okay. And then uh, we'll just push it out on our start. Flip it on, and she's running. She's pulling eight point whatever amps. And if you look down here, it says six, seven, eight. So right in there about the eight, eight amp mark, and she's running. So amperage is not going up. It's actually dropping like it should. So we got bad start components, simple as that. Now, here's what sucks. Look at the uh, suction pressure there on that gauge. So we've probably got a, well granted the fans are not running, but uh, that dropped down off a low very quickly. So we probably have problems with the, uh, with the uh, refrigerant charge possibly. We won't know until we get the fans running. Um, I'm just going to uh, see what they want to do, if they want to have me order the right ones, or if you want to use one of the three-in-ones. All right, so we got the start components for that compressor. We're gonna get those, we're gonna get those put on. Once we get done with that, he wants us to look at a makeup air unit that doesn't seem to be heating the air for the kitchen. So we're gonna look at that once we get done. All right, so I got my goodies up here. Let's see if we can go ahead and get some of this stuff unhooked. Power's been off for a while. If you remember, we had some issues with the pressures. So we're gonna have to double check those. And maybe it's something, maybe it's not. So we got that there. Just like it, that's good. We went with OEM parts, except for the capacitor. POV. Got our bleed resistor here. Just comes all 
made up with a uh, little spade terminal on there. there we go. Put this on there next. As best as can be expected, I'm going to use a little piece of duct tape to hold that in place. There we go. Not uh, what I preferred versus having an OEM capacitor, but it'll work out just fine. So, got it all in there. Should be able to plug this thing in and watch it start up. Look at that, it kicked her right along. And she's going down into it. No real heat coming through. Probably why wasn't doing so good. So let's go ahead and kill it and see if we can sniff a uh, leak out here. Okay, what's kind of concerning is we got 45, 50, about 50, 60 pounds of suction pressure there. So I hope, I'm hoping it's not a restriction of some sort. I don't know if this one's a TXV or an orifice. So go grab the leak detector. I know we definitely get a lot of leaks in those. Freaking uh, condensate pan. All right, so we just scanned all this. We didn't pick up anything. Just uh, need to scan the inside, which is usually where my leaks are usually found at. So here's a little bit better look at what we're working on here. It's six doors. So this is definitely not a cheap unit. I think they got a quote for uh, $8,000, something like that. So these are kind of expensive for a quality one. Uh, 66 degrees, start to drop. Um, it holds 20 ounces of refrigerant. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll uh, just pull the charge and weigh it in, but I'm going to uh, actually just add a little bit and see what we get. I'm checking subcooling superheat and all that happy jazz. Generally they won't give you any of those measurements and a lot of times it won't work. This one here doesn't have a uh, receiver so it's going to have to stack in the uh, condenser coil. This comes down to some experience level. That's why I usually I just pull the charge and just weigh it in. But I'm keeping track of what I have and so far we're like at 10 ounces out of 20 got a seven degree subcooling and our head pressure is running 106 degrees and it's probably 74 in here so 84 94 104 so about 30 32 over ambient so we're probably right in that ballpark area right now super heat pretty much is not anything to brag about which don't surprise me a whole lot so uh, boxes in that temperature and so on so we're gonna let this run for a little bit but uh, basically, like I said, this thing's got a refrigerant leak in it. It's had a lot of work done to it over the years. Compressors, TXVs, start components, you name it. But the box is in really good condition because this is a cafeteria. And uh, it's the uh, same people always working with it, so it's not uh, abused. And so it lasts quite a while. Like I said, I do not recommend this unless you have problems. And so right there's your TXV. Normally I'd put my probe up a little closer here, but it's kind of warm in all the different spots. So I might do one more turn and I'm gonna call it quits because it's been working good up till, you know, they went low and start components went out. But I can't help but wonder, you know, is there an issue with the compressor? Was it basically overheating? Which is why I'm kind of adjusting it because it just appears that uh, the start components have been getting changed an awful lot and uh, like every two years. So that's kind of the reason why I went with what I did. And she just shut off before I had the chance to do it. So we're right there at 35 degrees. I'm going to leave it alone. Sometimes you dig yourself a hole. We uh, went a total of three total turns out. And uh, I even wrote it there in case I ever need to put it back the way it was. That's a big thing. Make sure you keep track of your turns. So um, 
that's gonna wrap this one up. We gotta go up on the roof now and check out and make a fair unit. All right, so the complaint was basically it was cold air this morning. So we got a captive air hood and uh, exhaust fan here. It's not the strongest feeling in the world, so I'm gonna double check the belt and it's loose as a goose. So that's not helping much. So let's get that fixed. I should go down and grab my crowbar to pry this baby over a little tighter. We'll see if we can get it with a screwdriver, which ain't really the greatest way to do it. I have to say a lot of our issue is it's already about as tight as it can go. Now that I get looking at it, you see here, only got about a little bit more we can go. Go a little bit further with this thing. My preferred way of doing these is with the box wrench like this. Offset. Makes it a lot easier. There we go. That's almost the absolute maximum that can go. What belt is this one? It's a 4L220. It's got a nice clog belt here. It looks like it's new. Maybe. May try that one instead. Probably a used one, honestly. It appears it's gonna work. Let's see if we can tighten this thing up a touch. It's pretty much about, about as fur as it can go. Yeah, that's not too bad though. Let's see if we can get these nuts to tighten up here a little bit. This is only half the, half the story here, you know. That's why you gotta <clears throat> look it all over. They definitely got some good grease on that thing. Probably should have gave it a little shake, made sure the bearings are all right, which feels like they are. Let's see how it runs now. Wow, look at that. I don't like all that bouncing around there. Can't help but wonder if uh, those aren't level, like horizontally together. Doesn't look too badly off. Really probably needs to be a 410 belt. I think I'll grab my pry bar and a uh, level. Tell you what, why don't we just go ahead and get on to what we were first started to do. We got that going. Let's go over here and see what's going on with this. This thing's probably got loose belts also which would make the heat not come on because it has a pressure differential switch. Those look fairly tight. That's about had it. That's fairly tight. Pulley's fairly newer too. Yeah, not too bad. I bet you maybe the limit's tripped on it. Check the filters. It's clean. That all looks fairly clean. Let's turn this thing back on. Sounds like they got a damper kicking on. That's not tripped. Maxi Troll, set for 70. Just uh, does not appear that it's getting a call to do its thing. So I can hear. Huh. 
Okay. Let's check our pressure switches. All right, so our dampers are open. My uh, pressure switches didn't show it as an open circuit, so I may double check our limit there. So it doesn't look like we're getting power to our controller. So I went through everything, made sure my pressure switches were fine with my meter there. I've got like 0.3. Um, we're coming in through the low pressure switch and we're going out with the high pressure switch safety. So basically if it's too high or it's too low, it, that switch keeps it from happening. Goes over here to the limit, blah, blah, blah. Comes over here to the fire eye. Fire eye's got a neutral and a six wire, which is a low airflow switch. I've got 123 volts. So it appears to me we got a bad fire eye control. Um, I don't have any any uh, lights on it or anything. If you look at the back of it, it tells you right there. Pilots, main burners, all that stuff, ignition, all those are outputs basically. Um, lockout alarm is going to be an output to tell you that it's tripped. Neutral line limits operating control. I suppose we could look at number seven, see if it's got power on that. All right, so I feel like an idiot now. The burner on and off intake air thermostat, I guess I was kind of thinking it was a limit switch, meaning like if the burners don't run, because I've had this on their bigger units, uh, this basically has to be below that temperature before it can come on, which I turned it up, but I didn't, you can't see very well. But I'm gonna set that at 55. It works when I turn it up to about 58, which is probably about the ballpark where we're at. Everything worked. You can see the light come on there. We've got airflow, we've got control operation. It's modulating. So for the most part, everything's working. You can hear it kick in right there. I checked the voltages on it and it's modulating. So I'm gonna, like I said, set that about 55. And uh, that should be good enough for them. So anyhow, that's gonna wrap this one up too. So I uh, went ahead and got the uh, belt aligned. Uh, it's a lot better than what it was now. So that's gonna wrap this one up. And until next time guys, we'll catch you on the next one.